As we look through the empires of history, we can observe that conquering and ruling the European continent was almost an impossible task. Trying to put all those people under one banner and then keeping them there was nothing short of a monumental task. The first to even come close were the Romans, but their successors, the Byzantines, kept it together for over 1100 years, making it easily the longest living empire on the European continent. Today we will examine seven reasons why the Byzantine Empire was so successful. Stay tuned, this is Mind Guild. Reason number one, location, location, location. The Byzantine Empire all started in 330 AD when Roman Emperor Constantine moved the Roman capital to Constantinople, which is present-day Istanbul. And the location couldn't have been better for leading an empire. It's on the Bosphorus Strait, which connects the Black Sea to the Mediterranean Sea, and it separates Asia from Europe. This provides the perfect vantage point for watching over an empire. It was not only an advantageous position economically, other kingdoms could easily be watched as they had to transport through Byzantine waters. And they could be taxed for doing so. Not only that, the eastern location was where all the good fighting was going on. And with the capital so close, it was easier to control armies through sending messages and not having to wait weeks or even months for them to reach generals. Reason number two, self-defense and security. Defending your capital from invaders was a logical step to protect a Byzantine empire. And what better way to accomplish this than with a wall? The west end of Constantinople had no natural protection. So Emperor Constantine began building one in 324 AD. Within a hundred years, Constantinople outgrew its boundaries and Emperor Theodosius built a second one that spanned from the Sea of Mamara to the Golden Horn. Number three, super weapons. Like most great powers past and present, the Byzantine Empire made use of advanced weapons. Being a dominant force in their region, the Empire attracted and created the brightest minds around and they utilized this knowledge by creating super weapons. One such weapon was Greek fire. This awesome weapon could set ablaze entire ships and armies, which would continue to burn even on water. The weapon was so terrorizing that it quickly demoralized their enemies. Many compare it to the appearance of nuclear weapons in the 20th century. Another super weapon was the counterweight trebuchet. The Byzantines improved the original trebuchet that had been invented by the Chinese. Unlike its predecessor, the counterweight trebuchet could fire much larger projectiles at greater distances without requiring 30 or 40 men pulling rope. Not only that, it was more accurate too. Number four, the power of religion. Religion is one of the strongest forces on earth. It has the power to divide or unite entire nations. Truth faith can make people do unimaginable things. Spiritual belief can transform an ordinary person into a martyr, a saint, or even a tyrant. Emperor Constantine understood that if you can make an empire believe in the same God, then you can rule them through faith alone. Therefore, he standardized the Christian religion through the first council of Nakia. Over time, the emperor was seen as God's representation on earth. The emperor and the priesthood had their own autonomy with neither one ruling over the other. They worked in perfect harmony for the greater good. Perhaps the greatest symbol of faith for the Byzantine Empire was the construction of the most amazing church in the world, the Hagia Sophia. 
Number five, eliminating internal strife. Nothing brings down an empire quicker than internal strife. This was the problem with most all European kingdoms. As feudal lords gained more power and control through title inheritance and nepotism, many of them would try to seize the throne. Even if they were defeated, there was always a bitter relative or two left behind to sow dissent. The Byzantine Empire dealt with a few of these, but they were held to a minimum compared with most kingdoms. This was because they filled key administrative and religious positions with eunuchs. They did this because eunuchs were unable to produce heirs and therefore couldn't monopolize power through their own families. So they became the preferred choice for many influential posts. Number six, higher education levels. Education during medieval times wasn't an obligation like it is with students today. It was seen more as a great privilege. Very few people knew how to read and write, and those were mostly monks living in secluded monasteries. During these times, most of Europe was living in squalor and dealing with plagues and famine, along with other atrocities. However, the Byzantine Empire was at its cultural height, with about 30% of its population being literate a rate that the rest of Europe wouldn't reach until the 18th century. Much of this was because of the great universities within the empire. Learning was open to everyone, but it wasn't free, so most students came from the middle and upper classes of citizens. It is also important to note that women were allowed to study in the later stages of the empire. Number seven, diplomacy. Many believe that Christianity was the greatest legacy left by the Byzantine Empire, but then there are others who believe it was their gift of diplomacy. There is no doubt that their ability to get along with neighbors was a big reason they lasted for over 1120 years. The Byzantines took advantage of diplomatic knowledge they learned from three ancient empires, from the Greeks, they learned the importance of using rhetoric as a tool of public diplomacy. From the Romans, they learned divide and conquer tactics to assist other states with civil engineering projects. And from Egypt, they adopted dynastic marriages and sophisticated ceremonies to impress foreign dignitaries. The Byzantines became very skilled at this last piece of knowledge and it paid off handsomely for them. With the exchange of expensive gifts, they were able to influence foreign representatives in a big way. Perhaps the most value they provided to the world at the time was how they acted as a buffer between Europe and the Muslim world. We thank you for taking time out to watch our video. If you enjoyed this video, we would appreciate it if you would hit the like button below and leave a comment about your thoughts. And don't forget to share it with some of your friends. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future discussions. Until next time, this is MindGuild.